We are counting down the top 10 games on our air, and we are at number three, which might be the greatest regular season game in any sport in UConn history. The Huskies football team, still reeling from the murder of their teammate Jasper Howard three weeks earlier, went to South Bend to play Notre Dame in 2009. For many in the travel party, including our sideline reporter Kevin Nathan, it was a game they had long looked forward to. I mean, for the, you know, a person myself who grew up a fan of Notre Dame, it was you know kind of a bucket list moment. I mean, there was just so much excitement because it was Notre Dame. But I mean, I think you need context for what it meant for UConn because you know a month earlier Jasper Howard had been murdered, then UConn, um, and obviously it pales in comparison to losing a player. But they had lost three consecutive football games in, in heartbreaking fashion to uh, Rutgers in the last minute to. Uh, Cincinnati to West Virginia, and I don't think anybody thought UConn would would go into Notre Dame and beat the Fighting Irish, albeit a Charlie Weiss program that was down at the time. But you're talking about four and five star recruits, and let's not forget, you know, UConn got down in that football game 14 to nothing. But just the the atmosphere of that stadium for UConn that was, you know, a decade removed from from a Yankee Conference roots, you kind of pinch yourself going, you know, this is UConn playing, you know, big time, big time football. Now, as Kevin mentioned, the game did not start well for UConn. A minute into the second, down 14 nothing. Jordan Todman and the UConn offense helped turn the game around on the next possession. Two halves in the gun. They give it to Todman. Student body left. Tries to get to the edge. Cuts it up. Feels still in the 20. To the 35. To the 30. To the 25. 20. 50. 10. 5. Touchdown! Jordan Todman, 43 yards, and the Huskies get on the board with 11.51 to go here in the first half. The eighth rushing touchdown of the season for Jordan Todman. It was 14-10, Notre Dame at halftime, and then David Ruffer kicked a 20-yard field goal, put the Irish up 17-10, but on the next kickoff, it was that man Todman again. End over end kick, Todman will have a play on it at the four. Jordan up the right hash mark to the 15, to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, 35, 40. He's got the kicker beat. He beats him. He's up the left sideline. There's no flags, and Jordan Todman scores for a touchdown on the kickoff return. Jordan Todman, 96 yards for a kickoff return touchdown, and UConn is an extra point away from tying Notre Dame. Which they did. Then Dave Taggart kicked a 29-yard field goal with 70 seconds left to play to tie the contest. Then UConn's defense gave them a chance to win. Huskies four down lineman. Clawson takes the snap. Pocket closes in. He's got to throw it to Allen. He's got it to the 25, to the 30. He fumbles the football. He fumbles the football. It's picked up by Robert Vaughn at the Notre Dame 41-yard line. With 49 seconds to go, there's a flag on the play. Let's see what the flag is. Penalty was declined. Andre Dixon's two runs got the ball to the 20 with three seconds left, setting the stage for a potential game-winning field goal. Cullen looks back at Tegger. Cullen calls for the ball. Snap, spot, kick. No good. He missed it wide left and will go to overtime. So the Huskies went to overtime and in their first possession game, the lead for the first time of the day. Silent count, takes the snap, looks to throw, fires out here, touchdown! Yes, Kashif Moore in the right corner of the end zone. He was double teamed by McCarthy and Smith and somehow Frazier got it into him. Notre Dame would score to force a second overtime. The UConn defense held the Irish to a field goal meaning UConn needed a field goal to tie and a touchdown to win. Two runs set up a first and 10 at the 15. Dixon then gained 11 to the 4, setting up first and goal. Griffin a wing left. Frazier under center. Gives to Dixon to the left. Touchdown! Touchdown, Connecticut! The Huskies race out of the field, and UConn has beaten Notre Dame in South Bend. Andre Dixon scores, and the Huskies win it 33-30. to And let the celebration begin. And it's a win that Kevin Nathan admits was something special. You know, all the years covering UConn football, I don't know that I've ever seen anything like it, including, you know, the Fiesta Bowl bound kick from Taggart that sent them to the Fiesta Bowl. I mean, just because of everything that had transpired that season, high expectations, 
you know, the horrific situation, you know, the murder of Jasper Howard, subsequent tough losses, and then to, to win at Notre Dame, it was uh, complete elation on the UConn sidelines. And, um, you know, you, you could tell how much it meant to them. And I think even for the, for the coaches to say, we, we just won at Notre Dame, um, something that I don't think UConn coaches or fans necessarily thought they'd ever be saying or seeing. And the head coach leaves little doubt where this win ranks for him. That, that to this day, just gives me chills when I talk about it. You know, to think that, that UConn, who was an FCS school uh, and didn't really have a lot of history and tradition, to be able to go out to Notre Dame Stadium and to beat them uh, out there, um, I mean, that's, that's something you, you dream about and then you hope you don't wake up. And... Uh, and to, to, to have the following that we had out there that day and then that chant that they had after the game, the people in the, out in the, out in the uh, concession areas and all that stuff as they left the stadium, I mean, that was just uh, incredible. And there's nobody in their right mind that ever thought that could happen. And, I mean, people can say what they want to say, but there's there would – to me, there's never going to be a bigger win in the history of UConn sports than that because of the significance of who Notre Dame was in football and what they stand for and what we tried to do. I can't imagine anything any any bigger than that. And, and you know, I, obviously we ranked it as number three because we voted for two games other, but the three of us agreed the greatest regular season game we've ever had on our air. And as far as the history of the school's concerned, you could probably use the 35-32 D-Row slowdown game against Rhode Island in 1970 mm -hmm. as an amazing regular season game. But those are 1-1A. One one oh, absolutely. And considering what happened to Jasper and the three weeks that happened afterwards, the great game at West Virginia where West Virginia won late, then the gut-wrenching first game at Rensselaer Field when Rutgers scored on an 80-yard pass play in the final seconds to stun UConn, and then the shootout at, Ver at uh, Cincinnati – to set that up, and as the game went on, Joe, the offensive line, which is Randy Edsel's staple at UConn, wore down Notre Dame. You just knew if they had the chance, they would win that ball game, and it is still mind-boggling just to think that UConn football won a game at Notre Dame. No question. I don't care how bad Notre Dame was at the time. UConn was the better team.